Okay, let's do tutorial two. So this is telling us about the law chaos balance. Uh, you should read all of this, but uh, I'm just going to talk through it as I play. First of all, the enemy wizard is very far away, so we can move up uh, without risk. Uh, my only option is to cast the law shift spell, because um, it costs 20 mana points, and I have 30, and all of these cost 40. Uh, the bolt's free, but nothing's in bolt range. This purple stuff here is my bolt range, uh, and nothing is inside of it. So I'm going to cast the law shift. What that's going to do is move the Law Chaos Balance up here over to the left by 20 points. Uh, and what this does is it makes all of my Law spells, um, with the, the blue text here, 20 mana points cheaper to cast. So these used to be 40 at the start of the game, now they only cost 20. So the, the Shift spells are great if you've got uh, a lot of similarly aligned spells in your hand, especially because this state persists throughout the game unless uh, either the enemy wizard or I do something to change it. So the enemy wizard has cast a goblin. This is a chaotic creature, but quite a weak one, and it's moved the law chaos balance uh, over this way a little, back towards 18. So I'm going to move up to here, because again I'm, uh, I'm out of attack range from everything, and put my elf up on the high ground, which we'll talk about in a moment. It's telling us that the elf is great at attacking using its bow, um, but not so good uh, in close combat, because it has a, a weak close combat attack, and low defense. Again, the, the AI is, um, is by design here playing quite poorly, um, so that we have a decent chance of beating it during this tutorial. It's explaining here about uh, terrain height. Again, you should, uh, you should read all this stuff, but the long and short of it is that the goblin can't attack the elf here because the elf is too high up. We can see the elf has a hex height of 2, uh, and this cliff side prevents the goblin from uh, from swinging at it uh, with a close combat attack. Um, the elf can shoot down with a ranged attack, but again the elf wouldn't be able to uh, to use a, co a close combat attack down uh, this cliff side um, if it wanted to, but it, it wouldn't because it can it can shoot down, uh, down cliff sides too. So we're going to shoot the goblin. We're still out of attack range, so we're going to stay here. Um, we only have 19... Oh, we only have 18 mana points and the elf costs 19, so we can't actually cast another this turn. So we're just going to sit tight for now. It's, uh, it's showing us the purple hexes, but you can see that the cast spell uh, is disabled. So again, th these guys can't attack up um, uphill like this. If the elf was down here, and the goblin was uh, was just one hex lower here, the goblin would be able to attack uphill up this single hex, but it would be at a disadvantage, because um, attacking uphill is difficult. Uh, conversely, anything standing up here gets uh, a bonus for attacking downhill. So, I think what we're going to do is we'll take it a little slowly because we have all these rats to face. Uh, we're going to kill this goblin, put another elf up on the hill here. And we're going to back off out of the rat's attack range. Again, the uh, the AI at this level is not very clever at all. Oh, this is talking about height advantage, which I've already explained. Again, read 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 all about it. Um, so that the AI is is isn't even uh, being able to figure out a way to attack these um, these elves at this level. Um, if you play it at the uh, the harder levels, uh, it'll know all about this stuff. So we're going to continue to wipe out as many of these rats as possible. And I'm going to stay out of attack range uh, of the rats with my wizard, because why not? And I can make another elf. So th this is quite a conservative way to play. Um, I think if you're playing for the first time, uh, it's probably the way to go. Um, I think if I were in non-tutorial mode, I'd have kind of charged forward instead and used the elves as a, a screen to soak up damage, but it, it's riskier. Um, probably some or all of them might have died, and I might just run out of elves before I can get to the enemy wizard. So let's let's do it this way instead. So what we're going to be doing is uh, keeping all the elves up on this hill where they can do most damage, and uh, taking the enemy creatures out as they advance, going for the nearest creatures.
which are just going to mill around here uh, aimlessly while we take pot shots at them. So I'm not even particularly choosing targets uh, at the moment because there's no real need to. Because we're fairly safe up here. And I'll make uh, I'll make another elf up on this cliff here. Because these guys are going to have to come down in a turn or two to get at the enemy wizard. Okay. I think we'll just try and take out everything because none of these are, are really a threat. So that goblin's dead. That goblin's dead. You're going to go down here and you're going to come down here. Because it looks like the enemy wizards run out of spells. So we can uh, advance here and finish it off. Yeah, we're all going to come down now. Now that we're no longer under attack. Yeah, the only wizard's got nothing to do and, and can't really uh, even usefully move. What we are going to do though is advance behind this elf um, so that uh, as we enter into bolt range we can't be bolted. Because even though the bolt won't kill us outright, um, it's, it just feels like bad practice. Why, uh, why take a hit if you don't have to? So now we'll use this pillar for cover and move up with everyone else. Okay, so the enemy wizard has realised uh, it's doomed and it's coming out swinging. But it's not going to do it any good. Because we can finish it off. Yeah, the punch and the bolt. For great victory.